Welcome to the J-Boy Show, hosted by Jake Crane, the fastest growing sports show in the nation. I'm Coach Hugh Freeze. This is Super Bowl champion Brandon Graham. Hey, this is DJ Shockley, and you're watching. And you're watching. And thanks for watching the J-Boy Show. Hello, everybody, and thank you for joining us on another great segment of Prove Me Wrong. Very excited to get former Michigan quarterback and current director David Cohn on here. And I'm going to explain why the Auburn-Alabama rivalry is the greatest rivalry in college football. David Cohn, why would you think that Michigan and Ohio State rivalry is even close? I'm going to let you expound on that. Okay, well, first of all, thanks so much for having me. I really, it's admirable that you, you and I disagree on so little, mm-hmm. right? That for the instances where you're wrong, like this one, <laughs> I just think it, it shows so much humility that you oh, would really? have me on to do this segment, really? okay? Um, but, and, and another point to start, too, I will say, you know, you're saying the greatest rivalry in college football. To me, the greatest rivalries in sports are college football rivalries. That's true. So I think we could say the greatest rivalries in sports when we're about to have this conversation. I agree. Because, look, to me, I love Duke-North Carolina rivalry, right? But it manifests itself on the basketball court mostly. Mm-hmm. They play minimum twice a year, sometimes mm-hmm. three, four times a year. Yankees-Red Sox play more times in a season mm-hmm. than football teams play games, right? So that's just a, a quick aside for me. But to me... Alabama Auburn is the third greatest rivalry in college football. Wait, and you look, said third? Listen, listen. I have the utmost respect. I'll get at the end to the utmost respect that I have for all of the teams in these rivalries. Third greatest rivalry, okay? Um, which is nothing, you know, like you, you can hang your hat on that. You know what I'm saying? The greatest rivalry in college football is Army Navy, okay? And they've been playing longer than our rivalries. <laughs> exactly. Here we go. They've been playing longer than our rivalries, and they've played more times. Mm-hmm. That's why we dedicate the last regular season game of every season to Army Navy. You being an upstanding patriot that you are and an admirable young man, I know mm-hmm. you're not going to argue against that point. So clearly I've already won the argument and proven <laughs> you wrong. But to keep this from being the shortest prove me wrong <laughs> in the history of the segment, I will get to what I came here for. I will get to what you want. I will defend Michigan, Ohio as a slightly greater rivalry right now than Auburn, Alabama. I know what you want from me. You want me to defend eight straight losses. You want me to defend 15 losses out of the last last 16. Mm. So here's what I'm going to say. Here's what I'll say. You have to take into account the totality of this rivalry, okay? Not that not that Auburn, Alabama's rivalry in totality is anything to sneeze at, but if your statement were Auburn, Alabama has the greatest rivalry in college football in the last 30 years or Auburn, Alabama has the greatest rivalry in college football since Pat Dye stepped on campus at Auburn, I wouldn't be here today. I wouldn't argue against those points. But to me, before Pat Dye, and by the way, your interview with Pat Dye Jr. is one of the greatest interviews I've seen in the last few years. Honest to God. I appreciate that. I mean, and and what that man did for that campus, and I had the opportunity to meet him a few times, Mm -hmm. it's absolutely unreal. And I want to talk about some of those things at the very end. But what you have to understand, before Pat Dye was ever considered for the Mm -hmm. Auburn coaching job, Coach Bo and Coach Woody had their 10-year war, Mm -hmm. okay? Fitz Chrysler had already invented the two-platoon system for different players for offense Was that before the Model T Ford or after? Uh, Okay, I know what you're going to take a shot, but you're a historian of the game. Look, we have to take into account the history of college football. And look, that, I mean, that's what makes, that's part of what makes Auburn, Alabama is such a great rivalry. Mm -hmm. I mean, if we only want to take into account the last five years, the greatest rivalry in sports is Alabama-Clemson. Okay, for six year olds. Okay, so you have to take into account the history of the game. And look, it's not only it's not only I know what you're taking. You're taking shots. You know, you're taking shots at that rivalry going back so far. But to me, that's what creates a good rivalry. And look, even since even even when I showed up on campus, look, as just a kid from the South, I showed up on campus in Ann Arbor. That was the one versus two year. You know, that was the only time that Michigan and Ohio has ever met in a matchup where they were both ranked in the top two Mm -hmm. uh, of the um, of the college football polls. And I mean, that was just unbelievable to see that the winner of that game not only won the Big Ten, but to go into the national championship. So anyway, like I said, I have the utmost respect for all of the teams and the rivalries. I think that Michigan and Ohio is holding on by a thread as the greatest rivalry. And I'll get to the two points that I think need to happen for Alabama and Auburn's rivalry to overtake Michigan, Ohio, two things, one from each side of the rivalry. But what I'll say one last point in my opening here is Ohio's won eight straight. Michigan still has the longest streak in that rivalry with nine straight wins. Ohio's won 15 of the last 16, something like that. Michigan still has the overall record of wins. Michigan still has the largest margin of victory uh, in one of the games, you know, so, Mm -hmm. 
look, there are still things. I think that Michigan can turn it around in this rivalry, but it's hanging on by a thread. Yeah. And, and again, look, uh, I appreciate the pleasantries. You know, I always enjoy uh, you coming on here, and I hate to have to do to you what I'm about to do to you. But number one, saying that it's the third best rivalry in college football, the fact that I'm not laughing right now is only out of fear that I would burst one of my lungs <laughs> because the, to me that's – listen, and you know I have all the respect for the Army and the Navy in the world, mm-hmm. but, and, and it's a great game. It's a great part of, of college football. But to, to compare those things, those teams, you know, maybe in 1948 when they were playing for national championships or whatever, but uh, I, any rivalry where both teams are running the triple option outside of high school, mm-hmm. I just don't believe in. The second thing. So you mean to tell me right now, if I were to stop a 15-year-old kid in the street, he would never have seen Michigan beat Ohio. If a kid was born in Ann Arbor right now, 15 years ago, he has never seen Michigan they have, beat Ohio State. Brady okay, Coates first okay, year. Okay, so, so right. hold on. First, so tell, me one, you were wrong. So first one, tell me that you were wrong and then make your point. Uh, okay, well, that. excuse me. They've won 15 out of 16, so they probably won one. What year was that? 11. 2011. So that, hmm, that's 10 years ago. So they were five years old, probably don't remember it. Well, my biggest thing is this. When I look, number one, Michigan is in one state. Ohio State is in another state. I'll talk about that too. In Auburn and Alabama, you go to work, Mm -hmm. you walk outside, you take out the trash, and you've got to look at your neighbor in the eye. And for 365 days a year, the team that wins that game dominates the state. It has there are times where people that are married cannot be in the same house during that game. And, and the reason is because it's such a pure rivalry in the fact that you have the state school of Alabama that we all know has been super dominant, not only recently uh, with Bear Bryant making that run. You bring up Pat Dye, and you're exactly right. The rivalry outside of, you know, Punt Bama Punt and 72 and stuff like that wasn't nearly as level as it has been mm-hmm. over the last 30. You're exactly right in there. But – to me, to go back and say, because I'll put Pat Dye and Bear Bryant right up there with Bo and Woody. I'll put them right and up you, there. And I will, too. With, with Bo and, and I will Woody. Too. And, and, and that's amazing. But it's been so irrelevant for so long. Uh, probably the most famous play in college football over the past 20, 30 years is what, David Cohn? What do you think the most famous play is? The kick six. It's the kick six. What game was that played in? The The Iron Bowl. Bowl. When what? Auburn and Alabama were both competing for a national championship after the Model T Ford was made. And I look at Michigan. It's almost to the point now where Michigan fans have just given up. They have just given up. They expect it. When they play Ohio State, not on the hardwood, but on the gridiron, Mm -hmm. it's almost a fact that it's not if Ohio State's going to win. It's how bad they're going to drag them. Now, Alabama beat Auburn up really bad last year. But that game is typically very close. Yes, it is. Regardless of how good teams are. But being in state. Literally knowing that when I wake up in the morning, I'm going to serve it to you in a second, but I'm going to go ahead and just finish you early right here. We're going to go on a little 25 (laughs) to 2 run early, a little little Colgate, Arkansas. You got something coming to you. Uh, I want to make a joke, but I'm not going to. Anyways, my biggest thing, David Cohn, is that it is a true family affair Mm -hmm. in the Iron Bowl. It is as pure as it gets, it runs the state. 365, you can be 0-11, but if you beat Alabama, because when you get hired at Auburn, you get hired to beat Alabama and Georgia. When you get hired at Alabama, you get hired to beat Auburn, Tennessee. Well, that's the same thing for our rivalry. That's it, the same thing it for is, a lot but, of but how, Let me talk about the in-state thing for a second. Yeah, I've please, thought a lot, of, I've thought a a lot about one. this. That's a tough it one to get tough. around. It is tough. Because and when I look at Duke, North Carolina, I was born in North Carolina. Mm-hmm. When I look at that, like eight miles down Tobacco Road, that's that stuff is so cool. So I've thought a lot about this the last few weeks since we had planned this. Just thinking about in-state. And what you have to understand, and it's not something I understood about the Michigan-Ohio mm-hmm. rivalry until I went up there. It was born out of an actual war, the Toledo War, Mm -hmm. okay? So it was born, so when when you're talking about a border war between two states Mm -hmm. like that, and it actually manifests itself still in the city of Toledo, and I know that because I used to drive down to Toledo whenever we'd have an off day because it was the closest (laughs) (laughs) Chick-fil-A. By the way, there's a ton of Chick-fil-A's in the state of Alabama, if anybody didn't know. Iron Bowl's best rivalry. You win that one. But uh, anyway, born out of a literal border war Mm -hmm. between the two states that had to be resolved by granting Michigan, like, the the upper peninsula, basically, so that Toledo could be in Ohio. But, you know, again, yeah, we're saying that that was in the 19th century, right? Mm -hmm. That that happened a long time ago. And And Michigan won that one. 
in a 15 year old kid what do you what do you mean they what michigan if they had to grant michigan land then michigan must well have won the war ohio won the city of toledo though toledo's in ohio a shocker. but the city I'm shocked ohio the, state the won. city the city the city is 50 50 anyway i say that just to say that when you talk about the level of hatred when you're talking about in-state mm -hmm. when you talk about woody hayes yelling at his bus driver that he's not allowed to pull over to fill up a tank of gas in the state of michigan mm -hmm. because he doesn't want one penny of his money to go to the state of michigan and he says we will push this van back to ohio if we have to that's real hatred mm -hmm. just like just like some of the hatred you're talking about in alabama Auburn. a lot of what happens now in the media is this faux sort of rivalry hatred to get people you know jacked up but when you're talking about the 10 years war and woody uh, um woody and bo and you're talking about coach bryant and pat die which i do put them on those levels that's a real hatred but not for each other which we'll talk about the respect mm -hmm. level you know yeah. at the end yeah. of the day but the, you know you have to have that level of hatred so when you're talking about that it divides families and doesn't look th th that's for every rivalry that it does that i mean it's the same thing i mean like they've been running you know i would michigan, say michigan ohio, ohio state, state and alabama auburn does that some some don't but uh, when, when some some don't yeah well when i look at it too and we'll talk about the respect part later when i look at the auburn alabama rivalry it's something that number one everybody outside the state knows and understands but within that state you talk about not wanting to put any money into the economy of Ohio and Michigan, that stuff, great. Imagine, though, if you had to because y'all both live in there. It's like this. It's like you got, you got two brothers, all right? They each – you live in a nice house. They each have their own room. They're going to fight, but they're not going to fight as much. They're really not going to know each other as much, but you put them in the same room. You put a bunk bed in that room. <laughs> you know what makes you laugh, what makes you cry, what mm -hmm. really hurts deep down, and it's family. That's the thing. Mm -hmm. Michigan and Ohio State hate each other because they're neighbors. You had the border war. Your hey. fence is too much on my property. Be careful. These hedges need to be cut. But in the, the Iron Bowl rivalry, it is within the house. The neighbors don't even know about it. It's at the hey. dinner table. My mom was born in Columbus, Ohio. I haven't heard it from my cousins in a long time. And, and hey, well, it, so, don't, so don't just assume that it's not a family affair. My, my situation is unique. I'm saying it's not unique. as much. My situation is unique just because I'm from South Georgia. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, and you've got, you got a great perspective on, on both of them. On it. all four of but them. But deep down you know. in your heart, deep down in your heart, because I have been, and I'll say this, I have never been to a Michigan-Ohio State game. Mm -hmm. I want to go. I'd love to go because I think it's the second best rivalry in college sports. Mm -hmm. I really think it is because football is king. Look at how many people get there. But this rivalry is so pure, and it was born out of, honestly, big brother, little brother. That's what it was. You have Alabama, the state school. You know, when Bear Bryant was there, they were having 120 people on scholarship and claiming mm -hmm. national championships left and right during mm -hmm. World War II and all this stuff. And Auburn was always the little brother. And having a dad that played there, Pat died one time. You want to talk about trips? Stopped the bus on the way to the Iron Bowl, had everybody get out on the sidewalk, and said, all right, everybody take a step onto the street. Made sure there was no traffic coming. And as everybody took a step, he yelled at him and said, no, these guys don't think you belong to get on the, to walk and be on the same side of the street as you are. Mm -hmm. And when you go from being – the, the little bulldog in a pen full of big bulldogs, and eventually that bulldog grows up and learns how to defend himself and can fight back and do all this stuff and get on an equal playing field because, listen, Alabama plays Georgia, fans are nervous. Alabama plays Tennessee, fans are nervous just normally. Auburn's the same way when they play Georgia. But when Auburn and Alabama play, it is at an all-time high. And in my opinion, it being within the same state and being competitive – because that's the thing the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry has missed. It's not competitive right now. Harbaugh's on right his now, way out. Well, right now. I mean, right now, and look, that lost 15 look, out of 16, yeah, right? Yeah, but look, and like I said before, How Michigan, many inventions have Michigan, been made in Ohio, the last years? Michigan, Ohio, Alabama, and Auburn, all four have, have reeled off seven, eight, nine, or ten wins in a row over not the history 15. of this. Not 15. So we, they haven't won 15. Out that's of what 16? I'm saying. Okay, so l listen. Here's what I'm saying. No one, no one decade can can determine the fate of a rivalry that's 130 years old. And y'all is with too. That. And y'all is too. With that. I'm not saying ours is much longer than yours. Yeah, Look, yeah. no one decade can determine the fate of a rivalry that is 130 years old. So when you talk about Michigan may be irrelevant to a 15 year old, that's fine. We're not talking about 15 year olds. You and I are historians of the game. Okay, yeah, and that's what yeah. I want to take into account here. Now, what I do want to lay out though is I want to say, and I, I do. Want want this to be clear even for for my Michigan brethren I think that um, I'm we're talking about 
the minutiae here, the differences. Oh, that's because they're the two that's best. That's why we're they're even the having this conversation. You said you know, Army, Navy. So I can't believe small. you said that. I had to take a shot at yeah, you. Yeah, right I know. One I of felt our technical directors, uh. you know. So clearly, I've already won the argument. So everything else right here is just icing. But here either way, um, <laughs> <laughs> I got okay, him shook. So, listen. Uh, I do think the Michigan-Ohio rivalry, regardless of where it is, you know, is hanging on by a thread. And I think a few things need to happen here for Alabama-Auburn over the course of the next decade. Because this decade combined with the one that just happened, I do think 20 years is enough time to determine the fate of a 130-year rivalry. Mm-hmm. So when you make fun about the Model T and everything like that, look, you, if you're a historian made in the game, you have to – yes, it was. Yes, it was. But, um, look, here's what I think needs to happen, okay? If, if Ohio – is capable of running Jim Harbaugh out of Ann Arbor without a victory, do you know how devastating that's going to be to the spirit of Michigan fans? Oh. I mean, it, 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 I mean, what hurts so much about his lack of success so far um, is he was our guy. That's yeah. our pick. Yeah. That's the heir apparent. He played quarterback for Bo. Are you kidding me? There's yeah. nobody else we would, would rather have. You know? And so if Ohio is capable of running him out, and look, there were already talks. There are talks every year of him going to the NFL or going somewhere else. Mm-hmm. You know, blah, blah, blah. If he were to get run out without winning a game in that rivalry, to me, you're talking about next-level devastation. That's the first thing. And not only, I mean, Score sure, shirt. maybe he could win a maybe he could win a game, but I mean, if it, look, a, a couple things could happen. He could get run out without winning a game or he could win one out of 10 tries, still not good enough, or he could turn this thing around and be the head coach at Michigan for the next 10 or 15 years, okay? Even up the rivalry, go to a national championship or two. This conversation is very different over the next decade that you are in having. Okay? So that'll determine a lot of what the greatest rivalry mm-hmm. r- greatest rivalry will be in 8, 10, 12 years. Another thing that needs to happen is on the Alabama Auburn side right now see you're not even making the greatest argument that you could make on your case right now I'm going to go ahead and make it for I'm you saving, okay? I'm saving some ammo for okay the well good then I'll go ahead and steal it from you then to me a- a- apart from the the constant desire and hatred to beat your rival another thing that uh that a rivalry needs is you have to beat your opponent in seasons when you're not as good as them. And Michigan and Ohio has done that spectacularly for over a century, okay, until 2003, or since, since uh, until 2004, okay? Michigan, Ohio has done that. The 90s are a litany of when Ohio came in undefeated, the Eddie mm-hmm. George Heisman years, undefeated, I think, three times in the 90s, okay? Mm-hmm. Michigan beat them all three times. Same things happen the other way, right? I mean, Michigan's yeah. come in undefeated yep. plenty of times. Ohio's been. What Auburn has been able to do against the greatest dynasty in college football mm-hmm. history, Alabama right now, against the greatest coach in football history, mm-hmm. Nick Saban. 100%. What Auburn somehow has been able to do, that, to me, in the last decade, they haven't had a better team than Alabama except for maybe Cam's uh, Heisman and national championship mm-hmm. year. Somehow they still find a way to beat them every other year in Jordan-Hare. It's unbelievable to me. Not only is Michigan not doing that, we're not even beating Ohio right now the few years where we're favored, okay, which is like year before last, mm-hmm. you know, got drummed. Um, and so to me, that is the hallmark of a good rivalry. True. So if you want to talk about winning the last decade, yes, but I stand by my statement that one decade alone can't define a 130-year rivalry. But if, if in Nick Saban's sunset here, which he's not going to coach forever, I know yeah. he's the Tom Brady of coaching, if this guy in his sunset, you know, if, if, if it's Coach Harson or whoever it is for Auburn, that's the head coach in the next few years, five, seven, however many – more years Nick Saban coaches if they're able to keep stealing these wins from Alabama every now and then get in a college football playoff win mm-hmm. a national championship and simultaneously Jim Harbaugh the heir apparent is getting run out of Ann Arbor I will force you to come on this show again in five years from now ten years from now and I will and I will concede uh, that that rivalry has been overtaken I just don't think that it can happen right now because Jim Harbaugh could turn this thing so around. So more time. At Michigan. You're saying more time. When you're talking about a rivalry I, that's 130 I, I agree. years long. I agree. Okay? And, and I love when you make points proving that I'm right. And you're exactly right. Auburn has been able to take teams that are less talented and win big games, but they've also been able to take you know, games where both teams are really good. I go back to the kick six year and be able to win some of those. And again, I don't think Alabama will ever be as good as they have been in this past 
decade with what Nick Saban has done. I, I, I just think it's almost until impossible. Dabo is the coach, and then you're gonna have you, a whole well, you misspelled Mario problems. Cristobal. You misspelled Mario Cristobal. <laughs> D- Dabo ain't leaving the We're ACC. We're gonna do that one on a different Yeah, that'll segment. be a different one. But I do want to ask you this: Has anybody at Michigan or Ohio State ever poisoned anything that belonged to the other team? <laughs> Harvey Updike. I'll hang up and listen. Harvey Updike. He just had, this man he just went to Auburn much, and poisoned he had too a tree. Much Bama in him. He did. You want to know why? Because it's the greatest rivalry in college sports. People we, are willing. He I'm was a sheriff. I'm proud to say we don't have. A, he was a, a Harvey sheriff. Updike. I can't believe I'm making Harvey Updike look like a like. I'm using him as, as some sort of positive. First off, can't stand Harvey Updike. I don't think that's a great representation of Alabama fans at all either. Nick Saban okay, said so that. Okay, so you want to gas him up and so, now you well, wanna, well, now I'm just okay. telling you, people will go. <laughs> I know. To I get Unbelievable it. lengths, all because they put a Cam Newton, Cam Newton uh, jersey. On the Bear Bryant he statue. Said, he said Scam Newton. Yeah, well, those are your That's words, not said. mine. No, those are his words. Don't uh, well, put I'm that on me. I know words, Cam. Well, you said it. I like Cam. Like he said, it's an ongoing investigation. <laughs> Anyways, you go to unbelievable lengths because deep down in your soul, when you make that decision that you're either Auburn or Alabama, it is literally a part of you. It is, a, it is an emotion. It's an identity all on its own. And listen, same, I want to say this. Same thing can be made for I, the I, I want to say this. I, like you, am a college football purist. Mm-hmm. I want the game to be as healthy as possible. To me, Michigan-Ohio State is the second best rivalry, and it needs to be good. Yep. Florida State-Miami needs to I be know. good. I agree. For for Because I don't want this to be uh, just a monopoly like we've talked about. Uh, and and we're, you know it's something we've talked about, expanding the playoffs, stuff like that. But when I look at it, and I just look at – and again, using the past 15 to 20 years, mm-hmm. and it shocked me that Jim Harbaugh hasn't had. Shocking. It's shocking because shocking. he came from that era of, like you said. But when I look at it right now, I just I think 15 out of 16 is very, very, very indicative. And we're talking about now in college football. We're not talking about in the 50s or in the 60s where you could get away with a lot of things. Mm-hmm. And you can still get away with a lot of stuff now, but – I just look at the totality of it. I look at the competitiveness of it. And again, you brought up some great points. And mm-hmm. like I said, I do not want this to come off as me not wanting the Michigan-Ohio State rivalry to be great. Yeah. I want that to be an absolute fist fight every year because it's good for college football. And when I just look at it, not only being in state, not only having to see and be with those people every day, the struggle for Auburn to try and be as relevant as Alabama, which is the state school, to me that fight is different than any other fight out there. And it's funny that we talk about Duke and North Carolina, which is the best rivalry in college basketball. What makes that the greatest? Like you said, they're eight miles away from each other. You have to live with these people. It is a cool aspect of that one. And I'll give you another one. Why do you think, is it just a coincidence, and I'm going to flip the script a little bit, is it just a coincidence that Alabama basketball Alabama juices their basketball. program. Juices their program after Auburn All right, makes a run comment. to the I'm Final not, Four. Like, like do you think one of those on things that. happens? I haven't, I haven't if Auburn doesn't in go to the Final the Four, Alabama. David Cohn, does Alabama basketball do what they're doing I'm not right even now? Gonna, I'm not no. even going to comment on that. I say right no. Now. I'm not even going to comment. You're the, you're a guy who's sitting here saying this whole week that Alabama won't make it past the second round in the tournament. No, I said they're losing the Sweet Sixteen to Texas. You can look at the bracket for the draw. Anyway, back to what we're talking about here. I do want to talk about. I do want to talk about a few similarities between the two rivals real quick yeah sure. and that is the fact that um that coach Bo had coached for Woody Hayes and then took the Michigan job just like Pat Dye had coached for Bear that is crazy. and then took the Auburn that job is crazy. and to me it's that level I mean when you talk about the hatred that that Woody Hayes had for Michigan and and vice versa mm-hmm. but who did he talk to every single day on the phone he talked to Bo Schembechler exactly okay right. I mean same thing with Pat Dye and coach Bryant I mean I love nothing more than to sit around and listen to my father-in-law Richard Todd talk about stories of when he played mm-hmm. for Bear Bryant and to me there's a level of respect I've gotten I've gotten um to work with Kirk Kerbstreet a few times who played quarterback at Ohio State, obviously. And, you know, he always asked me, he's like, hey, how's Michigan going to be this year? And I'm like, man, you're the college football <laughs> guru. You tell me. But he always tells me, he always says, we want desperately for Michigan to be great because we want that rivalry yeah. to remain at the pinnacle, you know? Yeah. And so it's good for business. It is good for business. And there's a certain level of respect that has to be there for that to happen in all of the rivalries. And I'll just say that my situation is unique with uh, uh, the connections that I have with all four of these mm-hmm. universities. I mean, I'm from the South. I wanted to go to Auburn coming out, you know, Auburn had two quarterback commits that year. And if I hadn't thrown at Auburn's camp, 
you know, that summer, I wouldn't have gone to Michigan because it was a high school coach that, that, that story, called yeah. uh, the quarterback coach at Michigan, uh, Scott Leffler, and said, we have a kid down here I think you're really going to love, you know. And so that's one of the reasons I ended up there. And now marrying into an Alabama family, to go to games at Bryant-Denny and just see – the, the camaraderie there is different at those games than even at Michigan or something. Mm. It's just phenomenal to watch. And when I think about like being a video producer, I've had to shoot in Auburn um, several times, interviewing the chief of police, um, yeah. the mayor of the city, Toomers, the guy who uh, started um, Goldberg's Deli. Yeah, Mama you know, Goldberg's, like yeah. I mean, Auburn's veterinary program saved my dog's life, Penny Lane. Yeah. You know, like I just love these schools. And obviously I, I bleed maize and blue, um, you know, just mm. having an opportunity to join the Michigan Brotherhood was one of the greatest compliments in my life and then like I said I don't usually say too much good about Ohio but like my mother the saint Diana Cohn was born in Columbus Ohio um you know and my my neighbor raised from Ohio um, um Marion Ohio Cohn's two, a double agent two of the greatest uh people that I know so anyway I just want to say that you know while there is like this deep hatred that drives these rivalries you know the thing that really keeps them going is uh that mutual respect because yeah. there is no rivalry without that no, respect that, you're exactly right and and I, I want to kind of segue and and wind this down with, uh, I couldn't agree with you more. And when we had John Parker Wilson on the Jay Boy Show, mm -hmm. that's something we talked about at the end. That it's amazing you don't see fights during this game. You don't yeah. see jawing before the game and have to be separated because most of these guys grow up playing against each other. They know about each other. They know yeah. the respect level of that rivalry. And when that tornado went through Tuscaloosa, yeah, the first exactly. team exactly. that showed up, Gene Chiswick. Uh, props to him. Got the team and took him up there. Can because, I say one more? Oh yeah, yeah, no, definitely. Because it's I just family. didn't want you to cut off. No, no, you no. Because it's because it is family. And mm -hmm. in the same vein that I say, being in state yeah. drives that hatred. Mm -hmm. It also drives that respect because you know. If you're an Auburn fan and after the Iron Bowl and, and you go outside and you see your neighbor taking the trash out and he's an Alabama fan, while you guys may not agree on that you realize how much he loves that. And you need each other. And you need you each need other. Each and you other. realize the, the amount of emotion and just how much people put into it. And that alone breeds respect. Mm -hmm. And then you look at the tradition, you look at the game being moved in between Jordan Hare and Bryant Denny now yeah, since 89, which did nothing but, but improve it. Yeah. And both teams, even when Mike Shula was at Alabama and they were terrible and Auburn was winning, you know, fear the thumb and all that stuff, it is better for Auburn and Alabama to both be good, just like yeah. it's better for Michigan and Ohio yep. State to both be good. Because that's why I say, you know, it's funny, we're arguing over what the best rivalry is, but I got Michigan and Ohio State at number two. It's I not know. like I got them at, at, at number six. And I've got some, a ton of respect. Going to the Iron Bowl is one of my favorite things. Oh, dude, to without a doubt. World. But see, to me, I feel like it almost puts them in their own category. And we're talking about such small minutiae. And that's I'm telling you, you of how it could overcome in the next 10 years. I yeah. really do mean that, yeah. you know. And I'll tell you, I'll finish with one last story just because you were talking about um, the tornadoes to come through. I think one of the coolest things that I've ever been a part of in my life was I was in the room for Coach Bo's last speech. Coach Bo, it was the one verse two, uh, Ohio one, Michigan two, oh six, my freshman year, coming from the South, I'm looking around like, yeah. man, I just hope I don't step on any starters <laughs> yeah. feet here. You know, um, Coach Bo talked to us that Thursday night as a team. Uh, word came down Friday morning that he passed. The game one verse two is supposed to be on Saturday. Ohio State calls uh, Coach Carr and at least this is how I understood it. And they said, you know, we'll, we'll gladly postpone this game, you know, for you guys. I mean, this is, you know, mm -hmm. one of the greatest, um, mm -hmm. you know, coaches in the history help of the make sport it what it and is. help make it what it is, the 10 year war, you know? And so, uh, obviously coach Carr declined and said, no, we want to play, but you know, just, um, just that, that sort of level of respect mm -hmm. that you're talking about where they do need each other and you need those sorts of things to be able to fuel something that special. Yeah. And the iron bowl is that special to me, yeah. you know? So anyway, I just, I think, think that um you know they're two of the greatest rivalry and I hope that they I hope that they continue to be because to me the onus for the Alabama Auburn rivalry to continue to be great is on Auburn and the mm -hmm. onus for the Michigan Ohio State rivalry to be great right now yeah, is on, on Michigan. Michigan and it's been on, on Ohio before yeah. that's what I'm saying 130 years it's been on both of them right now it's on Michigan and I just I hope that they they live up to to the history because um right now we're slipping and I think we can do better 
Yeah, and again, uh, like I said, I hope so. Because uh, I love watching that game. I watch that game every year. Yep. Uh, and obviously it falls around the same time. So uh, like I said, I think those two robberies are in their own. I'll obviously put the Iron Bowl first. But great conversation, David. Yes, again, sir. Uh, regardless of what you know side uh, the viewers fall on, I, I think there were points made on both sides. It's a lot that of fun, you can man. Take home. A ton of fun. Definitely. And I want to thank you guys for joining us uh, on one of the many uh, Prove Me Wrongs that we're going to have. Again, let us know on social media which side do you fall on. I'm guessing it's probably going to fall on party lines. Uh, depending on if you're a Michigan, Ohio State fan or Auburn, Alabama fan. But again, this is the type of info we want to keep giving you from the J-Boy Show, the wa water cooler talk to help you win it. Make sure you check out the jboyshow.com, get some merchandise, got the black hoodies, gray hoodies, shirts, hats, masks, whatever uh, tickles your fancy, go check them out. Make sure you subscribe on our new YouTube channel as well. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you haven't subscribed, we've got a lot more of this stuff coming, so hit that button. We're on Apple Podcasts and Spotify as well. It's been another great debate on the Prove Me Wrong. We'll see if somebody can win sometime. J-Boy's out. The J Boy Show is produced by David Cohn, Technical Director Dave Hammock, Creative Director David Culbertson, Audio Engineer Faison Sharif, Production Assistants Blaine Crane and Kyle Orr, Executive Producers Jake Crane, Vince Thompson, Steve Chamberlain, and David Cohn. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel and visit our website, thejboyshow.com, for updates regarding our newest apparel and merch designs. Win the water cooler with the J Boy Show.